Okay, this first lesson here is um, an introduction into trigonometry. Now, we're going to spend basically three different chapters studying uh, trig functions, and what we're going to first talk about is radian measures. So our objectives for the day here are just written out. We're going to calculate radian measures for angles. We're going to calculate the arc length and the area of a sector of circles. And we're also going to find the angular and linear speeds of an object. Now, trigonometry actually comes from two Greek words, uh, meaning triangle and measurement. So what we're going to be looking at is basically some stuff that you've already seen in geometry. Um, now, in geometry, for angles, when you measure angles, you use degrees. What we're going to be talking about today, though, is radian measures. So if you were to place the vertex of an angle at the center of a circle with a radius of r, we're going to use s to denote the length of the uh, arc. So in geometry, you guys probably talked about this already, where you found arc lengths of circles. You had probably an entire unit on circles. Um, it was a couple years ago, though, so let's just try to refresh your memory a little bit. Now, the radian measure, we use this Greek letter here, which is just the symbol theta. It doesn't mean anything special. It's just we're going to use theta here a lot. Um, but all that that radian measure is, is the ratio of the arc length, s, to the radius, r. Okay, so again, theta is equal to s over r. It's just a ratio. Now notice that s and r have the same unit of measurement. So this could be in inches and this could be in inches. So what happens here is that uh, those units cancel out. So theta is technically dimensionless, but we give it the title of radians. Okay, so here's our first two examples here. It says determine the radian measure for the angle. Now, theta is simply the arc length, the ratio of the arc length over the radius. So because my units here are the same, this is going to be 6 over 3. My arc length is 6, my radius is 3, so I get 2 radians. So theta is simply 2 radians. Now in B, I just have to make sure that I'm careful about the fact that the units are not the same. So I have 48 inches and 2 feet here. So if I'm going to set up theta is equal to the ratio of my arc length to my radius, my arc length is 48 inches, and my radius, I'm going to multiply that by 12 to get 24 inches. So I also get two radians here. Okay, so theta is two radians. Okay, now to summarize, all that a radian measure is, it looks at an angle and it says, okay, if I'm going to look at the intercepted arc, S, the length of that arc, I'm going to compare that as a ratio to the radius. Now, when you get one radian measure, that would mean that the arc, this arc length here, is the same as the radius. So in other words, S over R is the same as R over R. We get one radian. So it doesn't matter what size that radius is. Um, one radian will always be that angle here. And two radians, double that angle, would always look like this. And three radians will always look like this. OK, so I'm going to come look over here to this uh, quarter circle. now. I'm going to place theta here, um, and this is s, my arc, and my radius r. Now, I already know that theta is 90 degrees, right? We already know that that measure, since it's a quarter circle, has to be 90 degrees. Now, what I want to know, though, is what that measure is in radians. Now, in radians, I'm supposed to take theta is equal to s over r. Now, let's think about what that arc length is, s. Well, since it's a quarter of a circle, I know that the radius is r, which means that the full circle here, if I went all the way around, would be 2 pi r, the circumference, right? Now, since I'm taking a quarter of that full circle, I'm going to divide that by 4 to get the arc length, so I get pi r over 2. So s is pi r over 2, which means that theta, the ratio um, in radians, is going to be pi r over 2 divided by r. and if I'm dividing by r, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the radius actually ends up canceling out. It doesn't matter, what this is showing you is that it doesn't matter what size that circle is. A quarter circle, um, this measurement here, that 90 degree angle, will always be pi over 2 radians. So theta, which is 90 degrees, is also equivalent to pi over 2 radians. Alright, so let's take a look at that. 
theta is equal to 90, which is equal to pi over 2 radians. And I'm going to derive um, a conversion for you so that you can convert very easily from radians to degrees or from degrees to radians. So what I want to do is take a look at just 90 degrees is equal to that pi over 2 radians. So I'm not sure why this is not erasing, but oh well. OK, so let's say I want to get um, just 1 degree here on that left hand side. Well, if I want to get 1 degree here, I'm going to divide by 90 on both sides. So that I'm ending up with pi over 180 radians. So 1 degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. Now, um, if I were to start again with 90 degrees is equal to pi over 2 radians. Let's see if I can erase this now. There we go. Uh, and let's say I want to get 1 radian. So I want on this right hand side to equal 1 radian. Well, I'm going to multiply then by 2 over pi. So I'm multiplying by 2 over pi on both sides. And I end up with 180 degrees over pi. So 1 radian is equal to 180 degrees over pi. So here's your conversion. If you are converting from degrees to radians, you're going to multiply by pi over 180. If you're converting from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Now, just to give you an idea about how um, you know large that unit of, I guess, measurement is, the radian, um, 180 divided by pi is a pretty large number. So that number is about 57. Point 295 degrees. Okay, so one radian is equal to 57.295 degrees. So keep that in mind, and that's consistent also with what we saw here with these pictures of one radian, two radians, three radians. Now, in this uh, next graph here, I just have a summary of some very basic um, angles that you've you're familiar with from geometry. For example, here you're used to seeing this as a 45 degree angle, but in radians, that's pi over four radians, so 15 degrees or sorry, 45 degrees, is equal to pi over 4 radians. Uh, 90 degrees, we already saw this one, is equal to pi over 2 radians. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And that full circle, so going all the way around here, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Okay, so these are some that you want to make sure that you have kind of memorized. Um, at least make sure you understand that a full circle has two pi radians. That's probably the biggest one, which means that a uh, semicircle has pi radians. All right, now for the conversion here, problem two, it says to convert from radians to degrees or vice versa. So here I have 120 degrees. I'm going to multiply 120 degrees by pi over 180 to figure out the number of radians. Now the uh, uh, 60 goes into both of those, so that ends up being 2 thirds pi. So 120 degrees is equal to 2 thirds pi radians. Okay, um, Pi over 6, this time we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So I end up with 30 degrees. Let's cancel, 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees. Okay, so I would understand why people might make mistakes um, when trying to convert. Um, you know, if you're trying to memorize, hey, do I multiply by pi over 180 or do I multiply by 180 over pi, you might get really confused. So I'd rather you understand what's happening with these measurements. Now I'll go back to this fact that one radian is about 57.295 degrees, right? So a very small amount in terms of number value. One radian is equivalent to about 57.3 degrees. So when I look at something like 120 degrees, let's say I, I multiplied it by 180 over pi. Well, I get this really large number. Because 180 times 120 divided by 3.14 is still going to be a very large number. That wouldn't quite make sense in terms of trying to change it into radians. Because even if I tried to double this and made that 2 radians, I would get about you know that 120 already, right? Because this is close to 60. So I shouldn't get a really, really large number here. That's why multiplying by 180 over pi would give me a, a totally, you know, incorrect answer. So you want to make sure that your answer makes sense. So pi over 6 radians, that's 3.14 divided by 6, so about a half. That number shouldn't get smaller, so you shouldn't you know, multiply by pi over 180 because this is going to make that number even smaller. It should get larger, so that 1 half, converting that you know, approximately 1 half radians into degree measures, it should get much larger. Okay, So again, make sure it makes sense. It's like proportions, um, don't give me an answer that makes absolutely zero sense. All right, now leading into the next topic, we're going to look at arc lengths and area of sectors.
Now, our first equation here, the arc length, is just the same. Uh, it's just derived from what we were lo just looking at, that the ratio, the radian measure, is equal to the ratio of uh, the arc length over the radius. So if I wanted to solve for s, I simply multiply the uh, radian measure, multiply by the radius to get the arc length. So here it says, find the arc length on a circle. So I'm looking at a circle with radius of 4 and an angle measure of 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. Now, I want to find um, what that measure is in terms of radians so that I can use this formula here. So 45 degrees, I'm going to convert that by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. And I get pi over 4 radians. So now the arc length, s, is going to equal pi over 4 radians multiplied by the radius, 4, to get pi. Um, now this unit is in inches. Okay, This is a linear unit in inches. So make sure that you're um, also answering it correctly. So when we're looking at this, this measure is in radians. Um, it's, it's actually unitless, but we just give it the title, radians. These should both be linear measurements. All right. So since they're asking us to find the arc length, s, give a, uh, an answer where you have the linear measurement written there. So pi inches. Now number four, this time we're going to be dealing with the area of a sector. And this time I'm just going to give you the formula. I'm not going to derive it with you guys. Um, it's pretty easy to remember. One half r squared times uh, your theta in radian measure. So it says find the area of a sector when the radius is root 3 and the angle measure is 30 degrees. So theta here is 30 degrees. Now I'm going to convert theta at 30 degree in radian measures. So I'm going to multiply by pi over 180, and I end up with pi over 6. So this is pi over 6 radians. Okay. So the area of this sector is equal to 1 half times the radius squared, so root 3 squared, times pi over 6. So this is simply uh, 3, right? 3 halves times 6. So what is that? Pi over 4. Now the unit on this. Um, it's not actually given. I don't have the linear measurement for that. So I'm just going to use uh, u for units squared because this is an area. All right. So be really careful about how you answer um, in terms of the units that you use. Okay. Problem five says a sector has an area of 100 centimeters squared and a central angle of half radians. Find the radius and the arc length. So we're looking at here a sector of a circle. And inside that sector, the area is 100 centimeters squared. It has a central angle of half radians. So in other words, we don't have to even do any conversions here. We already know that theta is 1 half radians. Um, to find the radius and the arc length, we're going to first look at area equals 1 half um, oops, r squared theta. Okay, So we have 100 centimeters squared is equal to 1 half times the radius, which I don't know. So I'm going to keep that as r squared times theta, which is 1 half. Okay. Solving for this, um, I end up with 400 equals r squared. If I take the square root, I do get positive or negative 20. I'm going to throw out that negative 20, though, because the radius cannot be a negative value. So I have a radius of 20. Now, to find the arc length, I know that my arc length, s, is given by the radius times theta. So s is equal to 20 times the 1 half radians. So I have 10. Now, this unit, though, remember, is in terms of uh, your linear measurement. Since the area was centimeters squared, that means my arc length is 10 centimeters. So I have a radius of uh, 20 centimeters also. All right? All right, the last part of the lesson is going to be dealing with applications for what we've been looking at so far. Um, and specifically, we're going to look at the speeds of a wheel. So let's suppose that a wheel rotates about its axis at a constant rate. Okay, I've got a picture here to help you visualize. We're going to be looking at angular speed versus linear speed. Now hopefully you're looking at angular speed and you're like, oh, that means the speed of an angle. And that's precisely correct. So all that an angular speed is is the rate of change of an angle. Okay. Now um, when we're looking at you know, the rate of change of an angle. It just means the displacement of the angle. So, oh, we also use a new symbol. It's a Greek letter again, um, omega. It looks like a W. 
um, omega is the, the change in your angle over the change in time. So it's still a speed, okay? Um, and it's different than linear speed because linear speed measures, let's say I have a point on that wheel, okay? I want to know the linear distance that this point travels. So here I've got that arrow. Velocity is the change in distance over the change in time, okay? And abbreviated just d over t, omega is theta over t. So there are two differences here um, in angular speed versus linear speed. One deals with the rotation of an angle. Um, your linear speed looks at a fixed point and how far that fixed point travels. So coming back to here, here's a summary of both of those. Now our units um, for angular speed are going to be radians per minute or whatever time period. Um, and our linear speed is always going to be a linear measurement. So some unit of measurement, it could be inches, it could be you know centimeters, feet, whatever, over again a unit of time. Okay, so there is a difference also in terms of the uh, units. Okay, in problem six, it says that a CD rotates at 180 RPM, or, which is just revolutions per minute. Now revolution is just one turn, right? Um, we're supposed to calculate the angular speed as well as the linear speed for a point that is six centimeters from the center. Now when I calculate angular speed, I actually don't care about the fact that I'm looking at a specific point. I'm just looking at the rotation of the angle. Now in one rotation, going around, there would be two pi radians um, for one full revolution, which means that my theta, if I'm going 180 revolutions, would be 180 times 2 pi for a total of 360 pi radians. Okay, so now when I look at my angular speed, omega, I take theta over time. Well, that's 360 pi radians over my time period, which happened to be one minute, right? It's per minute. So here is my angular speed. I found that pretty quickly. Now, for the linear speed, I'm looking at the change in distance over time. So let's look at it a little bit differently. Now, in that same circle, I'm going to erase this real quick. In that same circle, um, for a point six centimeters away, that means the radius here is six. If you look at the distance that a point would travel going around that circle, that's simply the circum circumference, which is two pi r, right? So that's 12 pi. Now, it's taken 180 revolutions, so that's 180 multiplied by 12 pi to get 2,160 pi, uh, and that's in, let's see, centimeters, right? Centimeters per minute. Now, so my linear speed is 2,160 pi centimeters per minute. All right, now I'm actually going to show you how we can get that a little bit quicker, all right? If I take a look back over here, um, our linear speed velocity, right, is the change in distance over time. That change in distance is the distance that some point P here travels going around a circular path, which means it's just really an arc measure. Now, that arc measure should be given by theta times the radius, right? We talked about that earlier, it's simply an arc measure. So velocity is equal to theta times your radius divided by t, or theta over t times r. Now look at what theta over t is. Well, that's your angular speed. So velocity is the same as your angular speed, omega, times your radius. So here's an equation that relates both angular and uh, velocity together. So linear and angular speed. Sorry, my dogs are going nuts. So when we had first our uh, omega here, our angular speed, we wrote that as 360 pi, um, and that was in radians per minute, right? Well, what we can simply do then to find the velocity is to take the radius multiplied by that angular speed, so 6 times 360 ends up giving me 2160 pi, uh, and then this time it's centimeters per minute here. All right, so make sure that your units are correct, but basically that was a little bit shorter than having to go through this calculation here. You can simply use um, this equation that relates both. Also make sure that you know you can manipulate that equation, um, like here I solved for the angular speed instead, just in case you need to problem solve and use something slightly different. Okay, I just erased that problem. Um, I'm going to redo this problem, but instead of using 6 centimeters, I'm going to use a point that's only 3 centimeters away from the center. 
You don't need to rewrite all of this, but I am showing this to you because it's important for you to see what happens when you change that radial distance. All right, now when I calculate the angular speed for this point now that's only three centimeters away, I still don't really care about the fact that it's three centimeters away. I'm just looking at the revolutions per minute. So when I take a look at theta here, since um, in a full rotation, there are two pi radians. That means when I rotate 180 times, 180 revolutions, I'm going to multiply that by 2 pi to get 360 pi radians, which means that omega, which is theta over time, is 360 pi radians over one minute. So you can see that my angular speed has not changed despite the fact that I moved the radius to only 3 centimeters. Now my linear speed though will change. So if I take a look at my velocity, and I'm just going to skip right ahead to this uh, formula. If I take my radius, which is now 3 centimeters, and I multiply it by my angular speed, 360 pi over 1 minute, I end up with 1,080 uh, pi centimeters per minute. Now that's actually exactly half of what we got when we looked at the point 6 centimeters away, because that was um, 2,160, I keep forgetting the pi, pi centimeters per minute. That was our old velocity when it was a radius of 6, right? So I think it's really interesting that, and it makes sense too, um, if you take a look at a circle, a point that's farther away, so it has a larger radius, will have a larger linear speed um, because it's traveling a farther distance as opposed to the point here which is going to have a smaller linear speed because it's traveling a smaller amount of time. Or, I'm sorry, not a smaller amount of time, a smaller distance in time. Okay, last up we have problem number seven here. And this one says that you have a belt that connects two spinning disks. Now, the radius of the larger disk is 15 centimeters, while the radius of the smaller is only 5. Um, you're given the angular velocity of the larger one, but it's not in uh, radians, it's just in revolutions per minute. So we have an angular speed of 3,000 RPM, which I'm going to later convert to radians per minute. Um, but I'm asked to find the angular velocity of the small Okay, that's what we're, we're asked to find. Um, now, in order to do this, though, I have to realize that the linear velocity for both of these, uh, for a point on this wheel and on this wheel, is actually the same. Because it's connected by the, the belt here, my linear, linear velocity is the same. Okay, so that's kind of the key to understanding how to solve this problem. So I'm going to take a look um, at the angular velocity of the large one which is 3,000 RPMs, and I'm going to convert that into radian measure. So I'm going to multiply that by 2 pi. So I have um, 6,000 pi radians per minute. That's my angular velocity. Now, I also know that the linear velocity for that big guy, which is going to be the same as the small one, um, is going to be given by taking, let's use just this formula here, my radius, which is 15 centimeters, multiplied by my omega, uh, 6,000 pi per minute. This gives me a pretty big number, but 90,000 pi centimeters per minute is my linear velocity. Now, I can set that linear velocity here equal to the linear velocity for the smaller wheel, okay, um, and then solve for omega here for the smaller wheel, the angular velocity for the smaller wheel. So in other words, r times omega, this is the small wheel, should equal that linear velocity, okay? So I'm going to substitute in 5 here for r, and then just divide that out. Really, I'm using uh, now this equation here, velocity over the radius. So I'm going to divide that by 5 centimeters here. Those centimeters are going to cancel out, leaving me with 90,000 divided by 5, which is going to be 18,000 pi radians per minute. So this is the angular velocity for the smaller wheel. And as you can see, it has to work a whole lot harder, you know, it rotates much faster in the angular velocity here than the uh, big wheel, which was only 6,000 pi uh, radians per minute. All right, that's the end of the lesson. Uh, so we just looked at radian measures, applications of radian measures, but basically this is going to give you the foundation for being able to do some more trig stuff, um, which is your next lesson for tomorrow.